am going to be demonstrating this surreal dolphin painting in acrylics. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. For today's project, I am working on a Fredericks canvas. This is their Nature Core mixed media canvas board, super smooth. So in this case, where I was doing a lot of airbrushing, you don't end up seeing a lot of texture from the canvas like you would with a canvas that has more texture. So yay. These are not the thin canvas boards like you will often see me work on. This is a thicker three quarter inch, so it's very much like a regular canvas. And you would frame it in an open frame like you would any canvas painting. I am using Liquitex Basics acrylic paints and Createx airbrush paint for the paints. If you are supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you now, so make sure to head over and check that out. Now we will move on to this tutorial. Starting off, I just want to get a base layer. This first layer, if I have brush stroke showing, not a big deal. I'm starting with that aqua color in the center and I'm moving out to the ultramarine blue on the outside edges and then I will fade out into black for the bottom section. I am blending this with a mop brush and if you're unfamiliar with blending wet into wet, I will have a card pop up with a video that shows you how to do that much slower. But I'm going to go ahead and keep this somewhat smooth, but if I have brush strokes, like I said, first layer doesn't really matter. My goal here is to just cover the white of the canvas. I completely dried that and now I'm on to my second layer. This layer I'm going to be a bit more concerned making sure things are soft where I want them. I'm using the same colors, the aqua and then blending out into ultramarine blue and then into Mars black for the bottom section. Now I don't need the blue to come down this far but until I sketch it in I don't know how far I need to go so it's easier for me to go too far than not far enough. You'll see later on I don't have the blue coming down this far in the end piece. So now I have moved on to a Taquan bristled filbert brush and I'm painting this light aqua color for the water ripples on, or the water surface. Notice on these water ripples how I've got them thicker up front and then they thin out quite a bit as I move towards the back. And the color gets darker as I move farther away. I want that to just kind of fade out, which gives me a lot more depth in the end piece. They're also largely horizontal. I don't have a lot of vertical lines in there until I come through with the actual rays of light. So for the coral here, I am using ultramarine blue with a bit of black. I just want this to be a little bit darker than my water color. I'm airbrushing water and then fanning that out just a bit with a mop brush to soften it so my lines aren't too harsh for what's in the background. I want it to look like it's far away to build up that perspective here. Realistically, once I come through with the rays of light, you're not going to notice most of that, but you know, for what peeks through, it's on there well. Then I came through with just straight black for the bottom section. Now I'm going to dry this completely and use a liner brush. This is a Teflon bristled liner brush with a stiff brush that I'm smudging it out with. I'm using that liner brush with this aqua color and painting in just the hint of corals. I don't need a ton of detail. Most of this or a lot of it is not going to show. I just, again, need that hint of coral. So I've got some sponge coral, some shelf corals. I've got seaweed that I'm painting here that stick up a little bit on the upper edges. And I'm going to fill this in. Now, acrylic is very quick to paint in. It dries very fast. And what I'm doing here only took a few minutes. So I'm going to paint this coral all the way through, even knowing that some of this is going to be covered by the dolphins. Now, if I were working in oil or a medium that is much, much slower, even pastels, I would draw the dolphins out separately and then paint the oil paint around it just because the layering process, it takes a lot longer. With acrylic, for me, I find it to be much easier just to paint the whole background and then paint my subjects over that. Then I'm not worrying about bits where part of the background isn't filled in or I didn't quite get coral in the right location. This is just all nice and smooth. Now I am flicking stars. I'm using a stiff brush with a palette knife and white paint and just flicking the stars onto the background there. For my galaxy, I am using straight white paint. This is the Createx White with my FX Textures stencil. I will have a link to that in the video description. Once that was on there with the white, I just airbrushed blues and magentas over that to tone it all down. This is my first layer and I am for the space. I am airbrushing that blue over all of the black. I don't want to leave anything that has black paint flat black because it will look very flat. Once that was on there, I came through and I'm making some stronger marks for where that galaxy is going to be. And I'm using a sheet of paper here for getting my straight lines for the rays of light. I use the paper, but then I go through and airbrush over it to soften up those lines because I don't want a harsh, harsh, harsh edge. I just need it there so that I can get straight lines. Now I've airbrushed a little bit more of the magenta over the bottom, the galaxy section with that 
the magentas and blues. And now I'm flicking more paint. This will work for both my stars and the speckles of little light speckles that hit the water. I've drawn out my dolphins and I'm filling them in with a base layer. This is phalo blue, white, and black. I believe I've got a little bit of phalo green in there as well. I'm making sure that I get my shadows where they need to go. I'm keeping the shadows very, very strong here. And again, this is just my first layer. I don't need to worry about getting everything perfectly, perfectly smooth. Semi-smooth is good enough. And I will come back through with more details on top of this layer once this dries but I just wanna block everything in. The colors that I'm using here are very opaque, so I don't need to paint white down first. They're going to cover my background completely. If I were painting, let's say, a red fish, the red is going to be very translucent, so I would need to paint white over my background, and then I could put the, the red over it. Otherwise, the background would just show through any colors that are going to be very translucent. But again, these colors are very opaque, so I can just go straight onto the canvas. So the same thing for this dolphin here, using the same colors, phalo blue, I believe there's a little bit of phalo green, white and black, that is Mars black, which is more opaque. The ivory black would be way too translucent to get the coverage I need here. And again, paying attention to where my lights and darks are. Now, right now, this looks like it's not a part of the background. I'm going to adjust that by glazing other colors over this, the blues and some of the magentas, to make them feel like they're a part of the scene, right? This, this color doesn't blend well on its own at all. It's very, very important to pull whatever colors you have in your background into your subject so that it all works together. Again, just filling that in there. And there are some brush strokes. Again, not too worried about there being a few of those showing through. It's not going to matter once I put the rays of light over it. So it wouldn't make sense for me to spend too much time making sure everything was perfectly, perfectly smooth. Now I'm glazing some darker areas and I'm going to start pulling some deeper blues into these dolphins. You can see I'm strengthening the shadows that are already there. Doing that on all of these. And now I'm glazing some of the magenta on the bottom section, which would be reflecting from the space below them. Now I will come through with some rays of light on the dolphins. With this, I am using a round brush. This is a Taclon bristled brush, I believe. And just drawing in these, they're not actually white. They look white on the video. They're actually a, a very light aqua color. But drawing in the rays of light, notice that they curve around the body of the dolphin. I don't just want straight lines. That would make the dolphins look very flat. So by curving that around, and then these lines are a little bit thicker than what my final lines are going to be. I need to get this thicker, lighter base coat. Once that's on there, you'll see later on, I'm gonna come through with a liner brush, a much smaller brush, and and straight white for some highlights over those. But just to start with, I need this very soft base. And then again, these lines are gonna be a little bit thicker than the ones I'll put on later on. They've got that line along their back is much, much brighter. And then that just kind of fades down. I'm taking that white with a liner brush and lining some of the details, the tips of the nose, the edges of the tails, just bordering some of it, but not outlining it completely. It's very important that you don't completely outline your subject. It won't look realistic. So we'll come onto this dolphin here and do the same thing. I've got to follow the curve of the dolphin's body with these rays of light. Or I'm saying rays of light. Really, it's just the way that the light is sort of reflecting and bouncing off of their skin. Now for this guy, with these bits of light showing through, this is going to be a little bit darker than the ones I did up top. The ones up top are closer to the water surface, so their rays of light is, are brighter than what I've got on this guy. This guy, I am going to start mixing more of the aqua color in with this. Now, if drawing these rays of light seems very scary to you, you can take a white charcoal pencil, Generals makes one that I love, and draw them in first. That way, if you draw them and realize the shape's just not looking right, you can erase it and try again. When I first started doing this, I always drew everything out with that charcoal pencil before I went on with the paint. It makes it much less intimidating, I guess is the word that I'm looking for there. But it's much more, it's much easier to control because if you get out of control with these lines and end up with them looking absolutely terrible, you end up pretty much having to repaint the dolphin in order to cover them. It's not the end of the world, it can be done, but it does create a lot more work for you. So now I'm coming on top with the liner brush. This is a synthetic hog haired liner brush, a number, that one's probably a number two or a number three, and I'm using white paint. This is actually straight white now. I want these ones to be a bit brighter over the darker ones that I put on first. Now those darker ones looked like I was using white, but now that I'm actually using white, it's very obvious that this is much, much brighter than that first layer of light bouncing around on their skin. I'm also adding a few dots on there, just these little sparkle areas along some of those lines where the light is bouncing around on their skin. 
And moving on, my final touch-ups for this or final details that I did were to take some more of the ultramarine blue. I really, these dolphins still don't feel like they're enough of the background. They're too, the color is too warm. It's like a warm gray because I have so much of the phalo blue and phalo green mixed in with that gray. So what I want to do is take ultramarine blue and glaze some of that over portions of the dolphins, even the dark shadows. And what this does is it pulls them back into the painting. It feels like they're in the water instead of just stuck on top of it. But look what a difference that little bit makes. And with this glaze, it's just water mixed with paint so that it is very translucent. When you're doing a glaze, you don't want to mix white in with it because it'll make it foggy. So this is just straight ultramarine blue with some water. And the very last thing I'm going to do is paint some bubbles on this. And I do have a video that's slowed down quite a bit that'll show you how I paint bubbles. I will have a card pop up so you can check that out. Airbrushing some more rays of light back over the dolphins that are in the background. Now, originally, I had to paint the rays of light first, then paint the dolphins over them because some of those rays of light need to go behind the dolphins. And if I try to paint the rays of light behind them after, you really end up, it, you can tell that it wasn't going straight behind the dolphins. So I find it to be better just to paint them first, paint the dolphins in, and then add additional rays of light in front of the dolphins where needed. It helps it to feel like they're swimming through the rays of light instead of just stuck on top of them or completely behind them, if that makes any sense. There are those bubbles. And here is my finished painting. If you really like these marine paintings, make sure to head back tonight at 8 p.m. Central Time. And if you're watching this after the day that this goes live, that link will still work. You can watch it later on. I'm going to be painting real time a two hour live stream. We will be painting a whale tail against a sunset. So you can join me and paint along with that tonight. I have a monitor that I keep right next to my easel so that I can see all of my reference photos and I've decided I need a larger one, which means I need a larger shelf. So that means a trip to Ikea, which is frightening. I'm torn between being super excited because they have good stuff and oh, there's so many people there. So everyone should send me happy thoughts that I actually make it home from that people zoo. Animal zoos are so much more fun. Hey, wait, I'm done rambling about Ikea, I promise. Have you subscribed yet? There's a button right there. I made it so easy. And then you can keep up with all five art videos I publish every single week for free. There's a lot of them. I mean, six if you count Patreon, but that one's not free free. It's almost free. Yeah, I've got nothing else. I'm done. Bye. <laughs>